years ago, where basically they just told a completely fictional story about hackers because these, these non-hacking type people just kind of led them around town and pretended that they were looking for a secret disk or something crazy like that. And they, they bought the thing hook, line, and sinker and uh, made complete idiots of themselves. Yeah, but M a, lot of, a lot of media people don't do the research and you just have to stop giving them the benefit of the doubt. But, but, good but I too. think you, you forget about one point, and that's hacking media. I mean, w when I became CCC speaker, the, 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 the first and last thing Stefan told me is ignore the questions. Ignore the questions of the journalists. Say whatever you want to say, because you only have a special amount of time. And I mean, that's, that's how it works. And of course, if I say the power of definition, that means hackers do have a chance, and they still have a very good chance to become very important for the public image of how this computer networks work because we are not paid for doing what we do. We, don't, uh, we are not companies, we are not having interests like government says or whatever. We can uh, define things from a user's view and, and how these things work and I think um, uh, Rob is a little bit, I mean I can understand talking to journalists is hard work and it's not always uh, the, the best uh, thing you can do with your time. Um, but it gives Amen. some understanding to more people. Um, that's okay. I find that maybe one in, I don't know, on a good day, one in 10, a bad day, one in 20 or more, journalists gets it. That is, they're willing to be fair, approach both sides, and try to understand what makes a hacker tick and try to feel that feeling themselves. And I, I think it's not that hard because a good journalist should be a good hacker. It should be somebody who always assumes they're being lied to and tries to get to the truth one way or another. Because, you know, as hackers, we're always told things that aren't true as far as how things work. And we have to go around, you know, the rules and figure it out ourselves. Journalists get the same things from politicians constantly. They're told things that are not true. Now, you know, occasionally you get that reporter that actually gets the story right, does a really good job, and you continue to talk to that person. And we, we have a, a core group of people that I think are, are really good that we've met over the years. And yeah, a lot of idiots. But uh, you have to start laughing at them because otherwise, you know, it, some, it drives you crazy. But Could somebody walk in there and tell them to turn yeah. the music down a little bit? Cause it's Do you? Um, what, what, is, what is the message? I mean, I remember the message used to be uh, information wants to be free, which was, which that, was, that a was very never the message. You know, I don't know who came up with that phrase. I hate that phrase. I really do. Information doesn't want anything. Information's just, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's an odd, you know, it's, it's not a, 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 a thinking you mean creature. I'm information, information for nothing no, for years? Information <laughs> is, that's all. It's just there. It doesn't want to be free, it doesn't want to be non free. It's but just it sounds good. there. It sounds great. Information it makes us, should be free. It makes, us, it makes us appear to be people that just want to get everybody's personal information, and that's how it's been used against us time and time again. Information exists. If you want it to be secure, talk to a hacker. <laughs> if you don't, then uh, it will be free. It will be out there because it's not going to be protected. So, so, but did your ideology change then? Did you did you did your message change in the, over the years? Well, that was never my message. No. So, somehow that got pinned on me. I don't know. Okay. I it never was your message. That. Information wants to be free or not? No, 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 no. But I mean, the very first sentence of the hacker ethics in the original vision from Stephen Louis is information or anything which might teach you how this planet really works should be unlimited, free and total. So, and, and I mean, that's should, should. Mm -hmm. So we, we should work on this. And I think this is very important. And I would not say information wants to be free. That would be like saying hackers don't like this or that. I mean, hackers are very much different as information is. But to say we want this to be free, I think is very important. And sharing experience and all that, I mean, our work is following that principle in a way. No, and that should be and and Information and wants to be free is also a powerful sort of uh, um, mantra in the sense that it scared the hell out of the authorities in the early 90s and late 80s. Uh, we had a, f a phone number at, at Hacktick and a fax number and we told people if you work in an office and you have something lying around which is really interesting and, and it's eyes only or secret or says confidential and you feel it shouldn't be, then fax it to us and we'll do something interesting with it. We never received much uh, and we always said in the masthead, of, uh, we, we listed our staff and then at the end we said uh, plus the well-placed informer in your own, in your own company. Uh, um, and this scared the hell out of them. I never realized until much later, until I started talking to people that were on the other side, that this, this whole concept really scared them. The, the idea that 
all their secrets would no longer <laughs> exist. Or look at the record companies, how they get scared with the idea of information is free, it's everywhere, it's, it's um, non-productive as that may be, I like that fear. It's You like the fear, explain. Well, I like, um, I like to see organized structures of power uh, uh, being a little worried. That, I think that's a healthy thing for organized structures of power to be you a little worried. You organize this structure here. Hmm? You organize how? You're one of the HAL organizers. Yeah, so okay. Are you don't think I'm not scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, okay. But, if, okay, if, if. You feel? What? No, sorry. I know nothing. I'm from Barcelona. Um, <laughs> my name is Francisco. Um, <laughs> Okay, thanks for wiping that piece of data. Um, <laughs> now, what would you say? Um, oh no, I just want to have you hear your opinion about uh, when you heard about the I love you virus. Yeah. Did you think, Jesus, Microsoft helps them, you know? Or uh, this is a triumph for <laughs> social engineering? It wasn't a triumph for anything. I mean, it was just. <laughs> A stupid thing, really, that has nothing to do with hacking. But, but, but I mean, the, this virus, the I love you virus, is very well self explaining. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the program code, and at the very first line, you have this I hate to go to school. So <laughs> the key problem is mentioned the fucking education system. <laughs> so. Okay, we skip that subject. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, but what would be, if you you'd had to explain, okay, um, Emmanuel, for instance, I think your, your attention is shifting to, um, you know, pranking to having some kind of struggle, to, you know, to, to, to there. Right now, or no, not, oh, okay. not right now. But you, my mind you know, does tend to wander. The, uh, I think you used to say to to to, for instance, uh, 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 big companies, uh, ha ha ha, this is this is what's wrong with you, and now you're into uh, uh, so, some sort of fight, or not? Well, I did kind of register fuck General Motors, and uh, <laughs> I'm still doing that to a degree. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, it's gotten a lot more serious. But that just because I'm dealing with a lot more serious issues does not mean the hacker community uh, has sobered up as well. And that's what I'm, I'm referring to. I think they, uh, that it's still a very kind of, um, uh, we have a good sense of humor, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but can you, can you still win that battle if you are unorganized or, you know, as, as the hacker movement has always been a little bit unorganized? Uh, well, you have to be organized in whatever structure you happen to be in. Uh, for instance, whether it's HAL, whether it's 2600, um, that in itself has to be organized, but the hacker community in and of itself, I don't think that's ever going to be structured in a particular way uh, to be an organized political movement. I think there'll be elements of it that will be. And I think that's where we'll see some significant developments in the years. Yeah, okay, uh, Rob, for instance, um, and Andy, um, in, in the United States, you've got big powerful movements like the Electronic Frontier Foundation, um, the EPIC, coming from somehow, you know, at least uh, borrow some ideas from the hacker culture. In Europe, there's nothing like that. And there needs to be. Uh, there, oh there, there need to be lobby groups. There needs to be uh, uh, serious organizations going after these issues with serious money and serious research. And uh, this whole thing about the cybercrime convention and, and, and all these international and European issues that are, that are uh, currently being debated and the amount of documents that one has to read just to stay current uh, require professional organizations that, that just the, the press people from chaos plus a few people here in Holland plus a few Brits cannot handle the, the amount of, of, of sort of democratic erosion that is currently happening in Europe. But joining forces with other, other groups uh, that are battling all kinds of other things that are going on which are related things like WTO, globalization, all that kind of stuff. If we communicate with each other, and uh, there's a great tent in the media tent that you guys should visit and talk to those people. Um, 
I think we can get a lot further than if we just stay in our own little uh, groups of people. So, so instead of just looking at who your opponents are, you should look at who your allies are. Yeah, allies are all over the place. There's all kinds of people that are struggling with various things, uh, not just technology related, but... Um, uh, Have you found them in strange places? No, I'm sorry? Have you found allies in strange places or unexpected allies? Well, actually, for some reason, a lot of the religious right seems to like us. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, well, we have, we have a lot of people in the United States that are, um, um, I guess, ultra right wing who, um, you know, want the freedom to do whatever they want to do. And I guess they see hackers as one means of getting that. And, you know, if, if they support us for the, the struggles that we're involved in, fine. You know, they don't have to support us in everything we do. We don't have to support them in everything they do. But if we can all get together and, and say, free Dimitri or something like that, great. That's more people are on our side. You know, we'll just argue about something later and maybe, you know, not do something again. But you need people on your side for the, for the fight you're involved in in the moment. Yeah. Is, there, is there any movement in Germany like, you know? I mean, we are just in the middle of something like strategic discussions to do that, what Rob just mentioned a little bit, to professionalize uh, structures for lobbying and so on. So we had, for example, this afternoon a meeting with uh, an, an older member of Greenpeace who's very much long, and I mean, we can say anything worse about Greenpeace, but, but they are the most professional NGO on this planet right now. And I think we can learn from them how to fundraise and how to, to let people professionalize, do work, and, and make think tanks and so on. So we are having that discussions right now and also to, 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 to come to a question of allies. Of course, we, we have allies here and there. It's, for example, uh, if we talk about privacy issues and stuff like that, the industry uh, doesn't like privacy. The telecommunications, uh, 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 they don't like wiretapping, the telecommunications industry, because it means a lot of costs for them. It costs them a lot of money. ISPs don't like wiretapping for the government and so on. So there is even uh, we, we talked also this afternoon with EFF to ask them where's your money coming from and they said hey it's sometimes it's a telecommunication industry paying us directly for doing something against wiretap laws because uh, that's financial interest and as long as they don't uh, define any conditions with that money that's fine for us of course they say what they want but that's okay for us and I think there is allies to find because um, we've been doing stuff for, 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 for 10, 15 years now only on volunteer basis and, and we see to really run lobbying professional, we need people to be paid and, and do stuff. So mm -hmm. that's, we, we're just in that status of discussion right now. Cool. It, um, the, in, the, in the beginning you mentioned, you mentioned the, uh, the Hacker Ethical Code published in 1981 or something. Oh, even earlier, there was 97 something from Stuart Louis. Does it, yeah. does it, is it still valid or not? Oh, yes it is. I mean, uh, in a way, w we have that on our websites and I made a, a workshop on the Case Communication Congress two years ago on hacker ethics. We have that original uh, six rules or something like that. You can create... What are they like, if you give an idea? Uh, to, to, for example, mistrust authorities and promote decentralization. I think it's very important to um, um, have... Um, Let's say, I mean, there, there's some things what you can do with a computer and what not. Uh, you can create art and beauty, for example, is one of those phrases where I think, okay, that's from the hippie style it was the, the time it was written to. But we also had some extensions to this after our KGB and police investigation experience uh, trying to say, okay, um, don't shit into other um, people's computers, so don't mess up with other people's data is the official mm -hmm. title of it and um, to um, promote uh, freedom of, of uh, uh, public data, uh, but also protect private data. So to try to find this balance between public and private data is something we added to our hacker ethics saying, okay, that's uh, something we have to watch out on. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and I mean, that's not a Bible. It's not laws, anything. It's an ethical thing. It's so a it's code something of to, Yes, in a way, it's a product of code of conduct you could call it, something like a consensual way of acting. Because of course we, we from time to time have to handle the situation that someone is doing some bullshit. I mean, shit happens. And shit. so we, we, we need to, we cannot say if, if I mean, if, if I see now, um, for example, last year we had this distributed denial of service attack on CNN and Yahoo. And of course we could say, haha, that big company is doing so-called e-commerce. I mean, give a shit on it. and. It's, it's, it's funny and nice thing, but on the other hand side, seeing this with political eyes and seeing what kind of 
surveillance activities are justified by these attacks. And so just asking the question, might these attacks be initiated by the National Security Agency to get the right to make surveillance on the internet? So seeing this, that hacking or so-called hacking is used for political interest, I think we have to watch out this. We cannot only say it's fun. I mean, yes, we can, but watch what's happening with it. Okay. Are there, are there, it's, it's uh, 50 minutes. Um, are there any questions from the audience? If people want to know things, then you can move up to the microphone if you like. There's a microphone here. There's a microphone over here, and I think nobody will hear you if you, uh, except the two people around you or something. Uh, please stay to whom you ask the question, please. Curious from all of you, what ethics have we yet to adopt that we need to take into our point of view and sort of in our own consciousness absorb in order to go further in political activism in the acceptance of uh, crypto being a good thing and things like that? What, what do we have yet to learn? Oh, that's a clear question, I think. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm not here to... to, to I, I don't really believe in, in some kind of Bible or set of rules that everybody should abide by. I, I, I think ethics are a very personal thing and everybody has his own uh, sort of bias and his own sort of, sort of uh, emphasis on certain rules. I think there, there's the, the thing, hackers seem to believe in decentralization. Hackers seem to believe, there, but I, I'd like to distill this ethics from the things we seem to do instead of sort of writing it down in stone and saying that is that is the hacker ethic and nothing else shall be done. So I'm not sure there's anything we can tell you in terms of ethics, like you must do this and then everything will be all right. Uh, I, I don't think a lot, of it, a lot of it is, is instinctual. Like, you know, if you're brought up in a particular way, you'll know when you're doing something bad or wrong. And I think uh, there's many ways we, we can apply that to situations in the future that have not yet arisen, but uh, we don't have a crystal ball to figure out what those situations will be. But I think your existing ethics are what will guide you. But do you, do you think, like Andy said, you should also make people aware of, you know, uh, attacks on Yahoo and CNN it could be part of uh, 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 a political action that could be... Right-wing action. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really believe in that. Uh, I think at the time they, those distributed denial of service attacks happened, uh, they could just be waited for. They had Clinton on TV within 24 hours after those attacks, so obviously uh, their whole counter strategy, how they would respond to the first big thing that would happen on the internet, had been carefully planned. That was like an escalation that was, that was preset. If it's bigger than this, we'll go for this person, then that person, then the National Center for Infrastructure Protection will go on TV saying, They've been declared emergency phase five, and the American public is now at risk. And then we'll mobilize the army, and then Clinton goes on TV. And you're, you're an right avid reader of all conspiracy, time. I guess. Or Sorry? <laughs> you're an avid reader of all about conspiracy. Well, I'm not conspiracy theorizing in the sense that I don't think they planned the denial of service attacks themselves because they could be waited for. It was the time of Stacheldraad's new version. It was the time of... of uh, uh, system managers and network managers all over the world not really being ready for that. So uh, it's just like you could really wait for Code Red 2 or for, uh, we can now expect a number of fairly smart worms. Uh, I, I think we can all agree that. I, I, yeah, I, I have, I have some, some things which, which will be happening in the next, we'll be seeing smarter denial of service attacks from worms. We'll be seeing uh, attacks against the antivirus infrastructure. So. Uh, the antivirus update sites will be hit. The, uh, we, will, we can expect to see. There's like a whole ton of things that, that are now logical. Anybody with a half a brain can see these things coming from, from 10 miles distance. Okay, let's, let's, let's move on to the next question. Um, I think that uh, kids who are getting into hacking now seem to be becoming more responsible socially and otherwise at, younger, at a younger age as opposed to it, it seems like uh, it seems like a lot of the people who are hacking and like being destructive and whatever, like early on on BBSs or whatever, it took a very long time for them to become politically responsible, like not just for their actions and like how the media then perceived like the whole group or whatever, but also uh, um, 
things like uh, the DMCA and all that stuff. Do you think that, uh, do you, a, do, in general, do you observe the same thing? And do you think it's due to what um, Emmanuel was talking about, about communicating with each other and making sure that, you know, being teachers and making sure that we all understand what's going on, that we're all on the same page? Or do you think it's just because, uh, like, the, the technology is better? Or what do you think? Well, I, th I think there's a lot more to react to. Uh, these days, uh, things like the DMCA, that provokes a reaction. Um, before, if, if, if you didn't see the threat, then okay, you just play around with technology and you don't know anything other than that. But when you see that there's actual uh, political implications and when you see people are being locked away for ridiculous things, you, you want to sort of learn more about that. How could this happen? What does this actually mean? Are these people serious? And then you kind of want to tell other people, wow, look at this. Look at what actually is going on uh, because somebody is playing with technology in a way that certain authority figures don't want them to. And it becomes sort of um, almost an obsession where you have to get the word out. And I guess that's kind of what a political activist is. Do you, do you think that's self-interest or do you think that it's genuine like? like I think, on, it, well, on I think the it's always way. there. I think it needs to be woken up. And I, I have to credit the authorities with waking us up quite a bit <laughs> over the last few years because certainly there, there has been a plethora of crap that has come out in the last, like, say, five years. And I don't mean just for hackers. I mean for citizens everywhere on the planet. And I think that's why you're seeing riots in cities all over the place wherever these people decide to meet because people are fed up and they realize you're not working in our best interest and, and uh, we have to express ourselves or it's going to be too late. And I, I think hackers are, are an exception to that. The interesting thing about these, these developments around the, the riots and the, and the G8 and everything, wherever you stand in that, in that conflict, uh, what is really interesting, uh, uh, to me at least, is to see that uh, after these riots, uh, they went to basically beat up the independent media people. So they, whatever, wherever you stand, you can see that the independent media and the internet media that were there, the streaming, was perceived as the largest danger to, to their structures. Or the easiest target. Sorry? Or the easiest target. Or the easiest target. Or the easiest, but no, th no, they weren't just the easiest target. There were other people on the streets they could have beaten up that were a much easier target. These people could defend themselves. They could speak to other media. They, they no, they, they weren't the easiest target. They were the, from their point of view, the, the biggest stand in, stand in the ways. Okay. Next, is, is it clear, yeah? Okay. And any next question? Um, yeah. S from what people have been saying about um, ethics being a personal thing for everyone throughout this conference, I think I agree that um, everyone has to make their own ethics. I think that a part of that would be um, deciding what circumstances you would be willing to step outside your own ethical code in. Um, I just wonder if you've got any thoughts on that. I, I didn't get didn't get the. You want to know what circumstances? Um, could you rephrase this? Under what sort of circumstances would you say it becomes necessary to step outside what you would normally consider ethical, um, in order to stay, to say? Uh, when do you take drop the ethics something? and say, okay, now we go beyond? Yeah. Okay. Is our our ethics the, the uh, well? Uh, Rob, you, you didn't care too much about ethics, did you? Uh, but is there something you say, okay, now, now we move beyond um, ethics now, um, Andy, you've, you've been... Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's very important to, to, to know, I mean, you're responsible for everything you're doing. And, um, I mean, ethics, it must, it's not a rule, it's not a law, it's something, it's an idea on how things could work. And, and what's necessary that things work. So, I mean, if I shit in your computer, I might have fun this day, but you might do it the other way to my computer and that might be not fun for me. So, I mean, I, I just try to behave in a way that's uh, suitable, that other people behave the same to me. So, and, and of course, there's action that might be illegal, but I mean, I'm not talking about laws here. I'm talking about what, what I can say yes I'm responsible for that. Even if it was illegal, I go to court, and it, that's okay for me, because I think it was important to do. So, I think what the, I think what, what the guy is talking about is, is 
um, uh, can you imagine a situation where you would just toss all ethics aside and just say, no, I'm just going to kick some ass? Um, uh, if, if I could give you an example, right? Um, say um, you wanted to take a stand against the, um, a clothing company's sweatshop abuse. Uh, would you say that it would be all right to deface the website of that company to put your point across? I don't. I don't really think it's a big deal defacing a website. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, well, it's just something that a lot of people. I don't would know how that turned ethical. into the equivalent of uh, you know destroying a company or something like yeah. that. You're basically renaming a single file, and uh, I think once people realize it's that simple, they they stop crying for blood when they when it when it happens. Yeah. Um, I think that's a valid political statement. I know it happened a lot in Indonesia over the past few years. Uh, I know also that people would have been sentenced to death if they were found, and they happen to be in Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, of course, with uh, the new global society that we have, you might be able to be extradited to Indonesia to face death if you uh, hack their website. But that's the future. Um, the, thing, the thing is, that's something that uh, I don't consider to be a complete um, um, abandonment of ethics. Yeah. I think other things, such as destruction, well, I mean, what do you consider war? War is, is, is the total abandonment of ethics, yet all of our nations feel it's right to go to war occasionally. No, but do you think hacking should be a weapon instead of a goal? No, absolutely not. And I think, I think we, we saw the danger of that after the uh, U.S.-Chinese incident uh, earlier this spring where the um, spy jet crashed into China. Um, and instantly, right after that, spontaneously, all of you hackers started to attack the Chinese. <laughs> How about that? All the, the, the patriotic hackers of the world decided to attack the Chinese, and the Chinese hackers started to attack us. So yeah, all of a sudden hackers are being used as soldiers in a war that neither, neither side really was into in the first place. It was obvious what was going on. We, we got all kinds of email about this, uh, people encouraging us to join the war against the Chinese. And, and a lot of it came from, um, from Hotmail accounts. But the thing about Hotmail accounts is whenever they send you mail, the real IP of the, uh, the people sending the mail is included in the headers. And every time we backtraced the IP, it went to a .mil address someplace. Mm. So uh, it was pretty obvious what was going on. Some military idiots were having fun and uh, wanted us to take part in it as well. It's very important that hackers not be fooled by that, not be used as tools either in corporations or in the military or in the government in any way. That's an interesting story because there was such completely ludicrous reports on that, on that where, where there was a website by, I think it was Rand Corporation or some other uh, defense contractor think tank, and they were actually publishing statistics as if they were publishing war statistics. There, today, there have been so many Chinese sites attacked, so many, and they have made like five categories, like Chinese sites attacked by non-US nationals, Chinese sites attacked by US nationals, and, and they so have they, like, like daily statistics climate. of the conflict. And, and, Thinking about it from, from, the, from the war perspective, uh, the idea of, of waging war by defacing each other's websites and by basically uh, defacing each other's information is the ideal conflict in the way that it, that it allows spending of money without being messy, without bringing people back in body bags. And the, the funny thing about that was that when that was happening, there was not a single journalist anywhere who was saying, that's a bad thing to do, defacing a website. They were all gung-ho for it. So you have to wonder, you know, how hypocritical are these people that one day report that hackers defaced Yahoo and they must be sent to prison, and now hackers defaced China? Boy, how patriotic, you know? You become you become part of their game. Exactly. Okay. Is that clear? Thanks. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Or not? Five minutes. No. Question time over. Oh, oh one more. Do I understand the change of time clearly, that the first Galactic Hacker Party had the subtitle The Computer as a Tool for Democracy? We just forgot about that, we now have finance and personal ethics and that's okay too. Is that where we are? Oh, that's a clear question. I, I, I guess uh, Rob should be answering that because he, uh, he organized the first Galactic Hacker Party. Well, Caroline organized the first Galactic Hacker Party more than I did. <laughs> uh, this is Caroline Navion. She taught a lot of what I know about organizing big things. and uh, Computer as a tool for democracy, uh, I still believe that. I still believe that 
whatever is on the networks, uh, however they are commercialized, they can never be as bad as television and radio. Uh, if I say, uh, look at what happened to indie media uh, and, and how they were beaten up in Genoa, I think that proves the strength of independent media and that's partly a network development. So what are you trying to say? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say that um, the debate about ethics being a hacker, having knowledge, having the power of the knowledge of how the infrastructures work, should be more than about fun and incident. You know, if Dimitri is now in jail, it's more than just a person being, you know, accidentally caught because it's handy for the police to get a group who's traveling. I think there's a much deeper debate that I really miss out here. Like, for example, crypto, everyone thinks it's great. I don't know whether it's great. No? no, I'm one of the people who don't like crypto. I think you know, you, I mean, there's sort of lots of layers you don't like that what? you sort of de deny that it's part of hacker ethics. I would expect there would be more hmm. profound questions to ask. You don't like crypto, no, so you're not hmm. just an example of a debate I would like to have. That's not happening. Hmm. Ah, so you're not asking a question. You're just criticizing the moderator. Oh. Hey, uh, that was not in the game. I'm yeah? criticizing the sort of easy way you say ethics is personal. Yeah. You know, ethics is something that changes, that creates societies, that gives the people the courage to stand up. B92 was crucial in Yugoslavia, and without Exfil and all your work, you know, it would have been different seen there. You know? So well, yeah. there are I really moments that people have need the courage. That courage is based in ethics, and not only in fighting intelligence services. No, no, I, I said more than intelligence is personal. I said if I, if I try to deduce a sort of common goals, I, I try to look at what people are doing anyway, what they believe in, and try to deduce some kind of ethics from that instead of building some kind of ethics or taking them from some book, be it the Bible or hackers, uh, and then taking them from the book and, and, and trying to base actions on those mm -hmm. rules. I try to do the other way, which doesn't mean there isn't common ethics, doesn't mean anybody can just make up their own rules and, and so long and everybody's happy. It just means I go the other way in, in, in deriving rules from, from what people do instead of the other way around. I think we should um, mention at this point that hacking is also something taking place under the circumstances of a, of a culture. And we're here meeting in Europe where we can, we're quite relaxed here and we can say, okay, hacking is this and hacking is that. I was at a so-called hackers conference at the first hackers conference in Tel Aviv in Israel. And I met about 300 persons there. And um, I found about two persons not working for the government. I mean, if, if you show up there, everyone goes to military services. If you're male or female, doesn't care. If you know how a keyboard uh, is to be used, then you go to the information warfare department and it was everyone who was over 18 at that conference was working either for military services, hacking computers, or for companies who work for military services, or of course for the secret services uh, working uh, on these issues. And they were talking about strategies on how to distribute code uh, to make denial of service and so on and so on. And I, I mean, I didn't, feel very comfortable about that. I wrote a, a report on that. I, I thought it's, it's fucking very important that not under the term hacking, military actions take place, because that's where the militaries are today. I mean, they are in the field of, of uh, yeah, attacking each other through electronic networks and so on. And, I, and that's why I think your question is, in a way, very important, because uh, times might change here, too. And we might find ourselves in being warriors or whatever. I mean, it sounds like a little bit dramatic, but um, you never know. And um, so I think we, we do have to work on, on ethics and, and find out on, on what we can do and what we cannot do and where we should also uh, say, especially to the kids, don't do that because it might bring you in deep trouble. And I, mean, I had the second because death no, member not because of it's it you might bring you into trouble because it's wrong to do. Yes, also, but also because it's not, you can't play with those guys who make the rules. You know, that's a little bit of a problem on this planet. Mm -hmm. and, and playing with military services or playing with uh, computer services uh, or computers uh, on, on yeah, intelligence organizations is not a game. It's a kind of a 
something you really have to know. It's, it's the people who make the rules and they give the shit on laws, just like you do. Well, there's, there's two things. There's, there's, there's easy and difficult messages. The easy message is don't do that because it's wrong to do. Mm. That's easy because that's like I have my moral limits. They are there. Please don't do that. It's much harder to say to a kid, uh, it's probably fun to understand how DVDs are encoded. Uh, it is, uh, there's probably nothing wrong with understanding how this technology works, but I would advise you not to do it because you might end up for a year in prison. Uh, even though I think there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, that's a much harder message. No, is it, is it worth being a, a year in prison for decoding it? I doubt Prob it. Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> okay. That's the question, I think, isn't it? That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, though. <laughs> no, okay. Um, I mean... But, but I'm not sure we can reduce hacker ethics to don't get caught. That's, the, that's rule number one, don't get caught. <laughs> Hackers are very bad in that department because they, they like to talk a lot about what they do. And it kind of, it kind of falls, you know, it, it makes things more difficult for us when we tell people how things work, how we got into a particular system, what exactly we did. But if we don't do that, then we lose a vital part of what the hacker world is, but this, which this is, is the openness. This is an important point. This is an important point. Because I was thinking earlier, with the Dimitri case and, and other cases going on right now, uh, there's a few major questions which, in my mind, have to be answered, which is, for instance, uh, if I see a bunch of kids uh, playing around with smart cards and really figuring out how that works, never committing any, any crime, not at least in my mind, but under the DMCA, they're probably reverse engineering some companies' trade secrets and they're probably liable to go to prison for 10 years. Uh, should we all be teaching these kids how to uh, withstand police interrogation? Uh, and if we do, the press will stand up and say, see, they're criminals, see, see? Uh, so, but then again. So you're saying your innocence is your strongest weapon? Sorry? Your innocence is your. Yeah, but the innocent, the innocence is then causing these kids Re to go into these. People are asking for responsibility. <laughs> Don't you have then the res Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Responsibility. Don't you have then the responsibility to um, to talk to your community about, well, not um, that not that it's uh, wrong to. Um, discover how a smart card works, but um, that your community, people who are doing that, might come into trouble. So how shall we band together and support them? How can we support learning about the things we want to learn about? How can we support our friends, our comrades that are getting into trouble? And that's also what I miss from your panel. Very important. But as I said, the other thing that I was worried about the other day, uh, uh, which still, to me, is an unanswered question. You, what you're saying is very important. That's what the whole Dimitri but, protests but I, were about. Is, wasn't, is it this whole, whole meeting about it, or am I, got, am I missing something? Isn't the whole hell meeting about that, or not? No, no I'm not telling, telling about this, this meeting tonight, but the gathering, the days, you know, exchanging information just because of what you just said. My personal uh, feeling about it is that it's um, not as present. I don't feel that as much, no, I, I, I would like to see more of it. For example, I personally expected much more Genoa here. Much and more what? Genoa, Genoa. Yeah, okay. And uh, that's just, I'm just one person feeling like, hmm, where's that okay. coming? Where, where, where um, and when that guy asked about the hacker ethics and dropping the hacker ethics, why, um, why aren't there mass, mass attacks? I mean, why aren't there under the hackers, and maybe there are, and I'm just completely unaware, um, uh, Sparta, who is he? The black, uh, block, black block yeah. <laughs> of the hackers and uh, the white hands, uh, the white oh, overalls of hackers. Oh, they would love that. <laughs> but I, I think oh, that, you were that doing was just exp explaining that the hackers aren't soldiers for any cause. Okay, okay could you, maybe we should move on to the next question. What? Well, my, my question is, we have now, uh, uh, we're talking about the community and the hacker, but um, you're talking, well, in the beginning we were just playing with phones, and now we're some kinds of uh, political activists, and, well, out there the people that, that create those, uh, the, those uh, email viruses or, or, or worms still they think they, they are the hackers too, but can we still talk about the hacker these days? Because the people who write those, those 
those maker viruses think, well, I'm just playing, and oh, oops, it got out of hand. Sorry, I didn't intend it. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I think that's that's important because also uh, when when you talk to journalists and someone robbed out of the bank with a computer and he's called a hacker, I mean, what what we try to do is to to tell them, hey, I mean, if if someone uh, crashes a car or uh, makes some damage, uh, he he doesn't become a hacker just because he, he uses the computer as a tool to do so. And if someone robs out a bank with a computer, he's still a bank robber, it's, it's not a hacker. And if someone writes a virus and does some sabotage or some, let's say he, he expresses his frustration on this planet on this way, well, that doesn't make him a hacker. That makes him still a frustrated person who found a way to express it away or whatever. That's and, usually and, a and with a with a young generation, I mean, I think that's that's the key uh, thing. I mean, of course, people wrote write 